Hello and welcome everyone to this month's episode of The Grill, a Desolady show where we interview women in the Dota 2 community and talk about what they do in the community. So today we have a special guest. We have Team Secrets Analyst, Elvin. How are you today? I'm fine, thank or you. How are you? evening, I guess, because it's an evening time where you are. <laughs> yes, it's evening, but it's, it's 8 p.m., so it's fine. Sure. So for people that don't know who you are, just give a quick rundown of what you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm Alvin. I am Team Secrets Analyst, Data Analyst. I have been with Team Secret since uh, slightly before TI6, so it's been two years. My two-year anniversary is coming up. I'm kind of excited. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's me. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about your background. Um, you're not incredibly public on the public side of Team Secret. A lot of a lot of your work is behind the scenes. So let's talk about your background. In your Twitter bio, you have positions as both a data analyst and a data scientist. What mm-hmm. is the difference between those two roles? Um, so data analysts usually use uh, predefined tools to take a look at the data, get uh, insights from them, whereas data scientists need to figure out their own uh, workflows from getting the data, extracting it, and then ultimately building data solutions and products and using different tools and techniques that are not available to data analysts or that they they don't use, yeah. Okay, that's really interesting. So, So basically a data scientist is like they build the foundation for data analysts. Uh, uh, yes and no. So basically, there are, there are multiple ways uh, data scientists and data analysts can work together. Uh, sometimes you build the tools data analysts use eventually to make decisions. Uh, some companies work like that. Some uh, companies work entirely separately uh, on their data analysts and data scientists. So um, usually what we do is uh, data analysts are a bit like report builders slash readers and uh, deck builders that will explain those results, whereas data scientists use uh, more mathematical and statistical techniques to um, build stuff, basically. It's a bit a bit more of a technical yeah. job than data analysis. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sounds way over my head. I'm not good at math. <laughs> um, so do you have any like special certifications or degrees specifically toward data? Well, I guess science or uh, well, I am not aware any good data science program specifically, but I have a master's degree in information systems, uh, where I was, or I did a master's in data mining basically, mm-hmm. and I'm currently pursuing a PhD in information systems as well. I am working on uh, artificial intelligence this time around. Hopefully, building a natural language processing system that will be dynamic and evolving through time. Uh, Looking forward to that. I don't know if I'll be able to, but I'm working on it. Um, I also have five years of consultancy experience in data science. So, um, and I just recently moved to a company's lead data scientist role. So I I can say I'm quite a bit experienced in data analytics yeah, in general. Yeah, I'm sure your resume is amazing. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> so, since you kind of have a background with data analyzation, how, what got you into esports? What was your first involvement with it? Um, that's it. That's going to sound unfair, I think, but I got lucky. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a bit unfair to people who want to get into esports, I guess. Uh, I, so honestly, what, I think that's how it always is for most people in esports. <laughs> yeah, so th- what happened is that before TI6 and shortly before it, like a month or so, Mm-hmm. Uh, Team Secret was looking for an analyst to um, answer some specific questions, but they didn't want someone to go through replays to view them and to take notes and to, you know, get insights based on their intuition. They wanted something more formal and objective to compare everything together so that they can decide themselves. Mm-hmm. So they contacted me. Um, I had already a bit of connection with uh, some people at Team Secret at the time. So they contacted me through Twitter, uh, asked me if I would be willing to do the job. I, of course, said yes, because I was a Dota fan at the time. It's an exciting opportunity. But I had no experience in analyzing Dota data at the time. I hadn't done anything. So um, Clement and I had a call, Skype call. 
and he, he gave me, he told me what he wanted me to do and gave me instructions on what he wanted to see. So I put together something and, and this was for specific heroes, a list of heroes. He gave me like 10 heroes. And I went ahead and did it all for, did it for all the heroes in, in the captain's mode at the time. Uh, and I gave him the results and apparently they made sense and he was impressed. So I wasn't, basically that's how it went down. Wow, well hey, that's good. So you've been there for two years now, yeah. so it must have went really well. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess so. Um, <laughs> so I don't really get a lot of feedback, to be honest. <laughs> so I give them something, they use it or don't use it. I don't really make that decision. Um, but they, they, I haven't had any complaints, so that's always good. Yeah, that's good. So a, a little random I saw in your Twitter bio you have that you love British dramas. What are, what's your favorite? What are, what's, any recommendations for us? Yeah, I got. I have to go with Outlander. Okay, Outlander oh, is like. Oh yes. <laughs> Outlander is like the greatest show on British TV right now. It's amazing. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I actually I watched like the first. I read the book, like three of the books, and then mm -hmm. when the show came out. I started watching the show, but I haven't caught up with it, so I need to. Yeah, I, I didn't read the books. I'm afraid. I it's, it's probably like embarrassing fact, but <laughs> I, I got into the story through the TV show, and I it's amazing. The, it's a great show. Like the first two books are, are are good, and then it kind of gets really boring. So because it's like so much information. So, but anyways, the show's good. I'll I'll have to catch up with it. So yeah, let's talk okay. a little bit about like um, what you do with Team Secret. Go more into that. So as the data analyst for Team Secret, what tasks are you in charge of? Um. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm in charge of anything, but I have some responsibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, uh, biggest one is probably coming up with uh, formal ways of answering their questions. So this is what they need from me. This is what they have wanted from me from the beginning. Sorry, I lost my cursor. Um, this is what they wanted from me from the beginning. So they have these specific game-related questions that are not necessarily in the form of data questions. And usually Pete or Clement tells me what they want to find out uh, about the game. Uh, so uh, I come up with ways to measure them and present it to them and ultimately building it into an automated process so that we can keep doing that over and over and over again. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that's what I do. Uh, and also, with Secrets expansion to new titles, new esports titles, I am taking a bit more, well, more different roles, I guess. We haven't really started doing any of that, but um, John and I, our CEO, and I have some ideas that I can't really disclose right now that we are hoping to build, so that's also exciting. Okay, cool. So there's a lot going on for the future. Yeah. Um, so, I know you said that when you first started, you had no experience doing Dota, like handling data re related to Dota. So, what kind of challenges did you run into when you started working in esports compared to like what your previous jobs had been? Yeah, okay. So, this is my moment of ranting or venting, whatever. <laughs> so, Valve API breaks down so often. That was like my biggest challenge. I, it's just like. You, you rely on it, right? You rely on it to get the data, and then all of a sudden it breaks down, and none of your code works. Well, it works, but it doesn't give you anything. So um, that was my biggest pain point when I first started. I found ways around it, and I have little hacks in my code, but it's just like every time I look at that code, I'm like, man, this is just so ugly, but you have to do it. You know, you have yeah. to do, but when, when something breaks down that is out of your control, you have to find a way to fix it. So this is this was my biggest problem, I guess, yeah. when I first started. How often does the API break down? Like weekly, daily, monthly? Um, there is no real schedule, uh, so oh, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. But, but the issue is that it doesn't entirely break down, it's just the pieces of it that breaks down. So for instance, they have this problem with, uh, with labeling uh, the tournament. So Ultimately, you want to analyze professional and premium tournaments because the rest are like just noise in your data. But sometimes they forget to uh, label just big tournaments as professional and premium. Like so, when you're pulling data out from that, you're missing that, and then you have to go through it and then figure out that it's missing, and then uh, find fixes, insert it in the code manually to get that data. So that's sort of like it's not hard. It's just Annoying. <laughs> Annoying, yeah. yeah. 
Um, so what about, um, what does your schedule look like when you're putting together data for Team Secret? Um, I usually work in sprints, so what we do is uh, either I come up, come up with ideas or Pete or Clement comes up with, come up with ideas. So they tell me what they want from me and we build it uh, and I show it to them and it's, it's an iterative process so we constantly talk to each other on like if it's working, if it's not working, what needs to be changed and how it needs to be adjusted, etc. something like that. And then once we have the final product, I use it for some time. Uh, and then decide whether it's useful to them or not. If it's not useful, we remove it. If it's useful, we automate it and uh, embed it into our existing systems. So this is how it works. Um, I don't really have a daily schedule or like a weekly schedule that I spend on secret. It just depends on what needs to be done. Okay. So it, yeah, it's just as as the work comes, you work on it mm -hmm. and handle it. Okay. Yeah. So, do you work remotely, or do you go to the boot camps or attend events with Team Secret? Um, I mostly work remotely. Uh, I, I usually go to events when I have the time because I have a day job that I'm really busy with, mm -hmm. and when I feel like it. Some events I have time for, uh, but I just don't feel like getting out of the house, and I don't go. Uh, but yeah, big events I try to go to. This year it's been very hectic. I, I, I hectic. I haven't been able to attend any event except Bucharest Major. Uh, that's the only one that I went to, and hopefully, TI. Yeah. In in uh, August, so that's probably two things that I will be going to. But that, yeah, that's like it. I. But work you can remotely. do all of your work remotely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what kind of tools do you use for data analysis? Um, okay, so this is a bit bit complex, so it's a little little complicated. So um, <laughs> for us uh, dumb dumbs that just, don't just, understand, <laughs> just tell me if I'm like if I'm not, you know, if if it's just too technical or anything, okay. just let me know, and I will just try to make it more uh, uh, like non-technical. Yeah. Uh, so um, first, yeah, so um, we use. A uh, couple of tools. So we use a parser, which is which is what everybody uses when you're trying to get the data out of a replace. Um, and on top of that, we have a PostgreSQL server uh, where we uh, hold the data. And on top of that, we use R or Python to um, build the analysis. And then uh, there is a front end on top of it for our users, for our players to access the results. Uh, so it's, it's a web-based framework. We use Shiny for that. Uh, so that's basically it. Like there's a couple of layers to it. Uh, yeah. So it's not like you give the players a spreadsheet with all the information. They actually have like a place that they can go to on their own and just mm -hmm. look at all the information. Yeah. Okay. I used to give them spreadsheets when I first started because TI6. I got hired like three weeks or four weeks before TI6. So that was like I had no time to build anything. It's, it was just spreadsheets, and I. I just like spreadsheets a lot as a, as a form of communication or like results or reports. It's uh, it's very one dimensional in my opinion when you want to do that, especially if you're going to, if 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 the end user isn't necessarily Excel savvy. Um, uh, so this is why I decided to move from Excel. But when they ask for certain specific things, I do give them Excel. It's just I just don't really like it very much. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Well, that I mean that seems fairly straightforward. I mean. That yeah. seems like it works, so. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, what kinds of, uh, you kind of have mentioned a few things, but what kind of adjustments have you made since you started working in eSports to, like, better refine the data that you collect and analyze? Uh, yeah, so initially we weren't using a parser. We were just pulling the data out of the API, uh, and that wasn't enough. At, well, at, at first it was enough because there were just specific questions that could be answered through that. But as we moved on, we started looking at specific uh, points in game and, and objectives and stuff like that. So for that, you need a parser. We started using a parser for that. And then we didn't have a front end, so we were using Excel spreadsheets, then we moved to front end based analysis. Uh, we built, uh, we moved from tables to visualizations, which was my, my like, my favorite thing. Uh, so um, it, it just, uh, it depends on, what the team needs, basically. So if they need something, I figure out a way to best represent it to them. So that's by, by, how it evolves. Question. By visualization, do you mean like 
graphs and pie charts and that kind of stuff where it's like easier to understand no, or pie what? charts no pie charts <laughs> No pie charts. What, what, what kinds of visualization are you talking about? Graphs. Uh, and sometimes we put stuff on the Dota map uh, that shows certain things. I can't go into detail, I'm right. afraid. But um, yeah. uh, it involves um, a set of whatever is, whatever basically makes more sense to uh, summarize the data in a, in a way that it's digestible at, at first sight. So the team doesn't really have all that much time to go through numbers to decide for themselves and like analyze everything and just basically summarize it for themselves. They can't do that. Yeah. Uh, and I try to figure out a way to select a subset of visualization of plots and graphics to make sure that they don't spend too much time on anything. So they have time to just go ahead and play the game. Okay. But no pie charts ever. No pie charts. <laughs> no. <laughs> no pie charts. <laughs> so, uh, what are some things that people don't know about being a esports data analyst? Since you work a lot of behind the scenes kind of work. Um, so, the thing that probably just slips everyone's attention is that having information on something doesn't necessarily mean that you will go for the obvious decision that it leads to. So, uh, for instance, I, I do read a lot of um, Reddit and uh, responses from fans, etc. So there is this, um, let's say, a review that we get that we were not banning opponents' best heroes. But um, it's not that we don't know. We know. We have all the numbers. Oh, hello, Kat. Oh. Uh, we, have <laughs> <laughs> we have all the numbers and the results and everything, but it doesn't necessarily mean that um, you have to go for the low-hanging fruit. So um, the team just does whatever they do uh, for when they have that kind of information. So it's up to them to decide. Uh, you really, as an analyst, your opinion is of course valued. Uh, Clement asks for my opinion occasionally, uh, if, if, especially if there is something that is like not necessarily obvious. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they will end up doing what you would do as a non-professional Dota player or a Dota fan. So uh, that's probably what people miss the most. Okay. Um, so random question. If you could have mm -hmm. any ability in Dota 2, what would it be? Hmm. I am torn between global silence and blink. Oh. They, they're, not, they're not related whatsoever, but these are like <laughs> probably my two favorite abilities in the game. I love how global silence silences everything. Yeah. It's just so cool. Yeah. And Blink is just useful, you know? Yeah, it is. I think I would choose uh, Nature's Prophet Teleport. Teleport? That would mm -hmm. be pretty handy. No more airfare, no more paying for trains or anything. <laughs> I actually love trains and kind of like flying, so... Yeah, I, I enjoy traveling, but th where I live, there are no trains at all. So whenever I go somewhere that has trains, I'm very intimidated because I don't know, like where to go or which line to catch uh -huh. yeah there's no there's like no public transportation where i live like at all so <laughs> um anyways so let's talk a bit about the future for you um mm -hmm. what kind of advice do you have for people pursuing a job in, as a data analyst in esports so pursuing i don't know what i can tell you because i never really pursued the job i just got lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, if, if people happen to get a job uh, as a data analyst in an esports title or for a team, uh, my biggest, probably most useful advice would be for them is to listen to what the team wants. So because if, if you listen to what the players want, what the team wants, they will tell you what they need. And try to make your results as simple and as digestible for them as possible so that they don't have to spend too much time on it. Make sure that you always list your assumptions and the implications of them and the results so that they know what they are using while they're making their decisions, if they're using it. So that, that would be, just communicate well, that would be my, my biggest advice. And it's just true for everything. I, I, I feel like it's just generic advice. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a, another random question. Um, how many, like, how much time does it take you to put together, like, a report or update for the team? 
like how many hours? Does it take hours? Is it all mostly automated at this point where you just kind of sort it and put it into the system or? Uh, it's Once we build things, it's mostly automated. I just have to, every time we update the system, I just have to go through everything because API breaks down. I just have to validate everything so that it makes sense for the team. Uh, uh, that's just That just takes like a couple of hours. Okay. Uh, for for the whole thing to run uh, and for me to check to see if it's if it if it makes making sense and if if I'm not missing anything, but building things takes most of my time when I'm building new things. It just uh, you really can't tell how long it will take until you have started working on it. Uh, usually when we're, uh, we're we're building something new, it just it's a couple of iterations with Pete and me, uh, so it's a couple of weeks is probably the best estimate I can give. Okay. It, Pete's the... Who's coach. Pete? Zombie. Oh, the coach. oh yeah. okay. Pete. Okay. Yeah, it's hard. Sometimes when people use first names in esports, it's like, who are you yeah. talking about? You have to use, like, the handle. It can be confusing. I mean, it was so weird for me when I first started talking to players to call them by their um, tags. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I've been working for a very long time, yeah. and I'm just used to interacting people by on on a first name basis or not if, if I'm working a surname basis. But yeah. when you're interacting with players, it's just their tags, and it's it's so hard for me to just call somebody <laughs> by their tag. It's just I don't know. I'm getting used to it by now, but it's it's a bit confusing because I'm in the middle sometimes. I call Puppy Clement. Sometimes I call him Puppy. So I just stopped at one point and just started calling him the captain. Yeah. I just call him Captain now when we're talking. So. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a funny kind of uh, bridge because it's like when you go to an event, it's like I don't know if I should introduce myself with my real name or my tag. Yeah. Like people probably know me better from my tag, but it's kind of weird to introduce like, "Hi, I'm Leafy PG." You know. <laughs> my tag is my name, so that yeah. helps. So. Uh, Elvan is how my name is pronounced in Turkish, oh, right. and when I just write that, it's just my name anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, so, was there anything that you wish you had known before uh, when you got started in esports? Not really. Uh, that's not a helpful answer, I know. <laughs> but um, I'm not really that well coupled or integrated into the esports ecosystem, so um, my experience has been mostly with my team, and my team have cool people in it, so it's it's been easy for me. Uh, but I'm not sure if that will be the case for everybody else. Yeah. Um, are there any other areas of esports that you want to get involved in in the future? Yes and no. Um, so that that's also not a very helpful answer. But uh, <laughs> so. Um, I don't really play any other esports titles except for maybe casual Overwatch, but that doesn't really count because it's just casual Overwatch. Uh, so I'm not really a fan of any other title besides Dota. Getting into Dota, like doing this job, is um, more of a passion thing. And I am going to eventually get into other titles, especially after TI, I, I assume. Uh, that secrets involved in, so we're going to be building stuff for that as well, analytical and non-analytical. Um, that's that's something that I want to do for secret, but it's not necessarily out of my own passion for those games. It's just a job. Mm. Whereas Dora is not like that. It's just it's something that I really love doing. So yeah, I, it's it's a it's I don't know. It's a vague answer. Yeah. So do you do you see yourself eventually or potentially transitioning into working full time in esports? I yeah, consider sure that actually in December I was I talked to I was talking to Sunbi about this and he was rather surprised. Uh, I wanted to go to esports full time, and then I got offered a job in my current company as a lead data scientist. And my job is so cool right now. I got to call the shots. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all shots, but some shots, and I really <laughs> like that. So I yeah. just decided, yeah, I'm not gonna do esports full time. I'm just yeah. gonna do this on the side, so. So for now, you're happy with the current setup of, you know, part time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I mean, that might change. Uh, so uh, I might change my mind. Yeah. Things happen. So I don't know what what the future holds, but right now I'm happy. 
Okay, good. I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> um, Thank you. So, how do you feel about attending TI in Vancouver this year, following Team Secrets qualification? Which congratulations! I already said this before the stream, but congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you so much. How do you feel about so, being in Vancouver and just in general the changes? Yeah. I, I, I'm, okay. I know. I think. I, okay. So I, I guess Roger Arena and Vancouver is amazing, but. Um, I must admit that I'm a little disappointed that TI is not going to be in Kirin this year. So, um, when I first joined Secret, uh, I, I, I was at a Google conference for the first day of TI6. So I was not there when team got eliminated. I was not there when they were playing. I never got to see them play in TI6. So uh, I arrived on the second day and when I got to the key arena, there was nobody in the suite. There was, there was no one in, in, in our room and I was just... I was alone, but even though I was alone, even though I missed my team's game, and I was I essentially knew nobody at the time, it was being in Key Arena and seeing it fill up and uh, people leaving and then coming back and then leaving again and then walking and interacting and that's full day of Dota. It's just a heartbeat, you know. It's it is such an amazing feeling. I, I can't even describe it. So here, you know, I have I, I don't know if, if this is even justified for me to have this kind of emotional attachment to Kiri, you know, because I'm not a player. I never got to play in there. I know I, I never will. Uh, but uh, being in Kiri, you know, was just such an amazing feeling. And happened. Okay, I felt the same thing again in TI7. In the first day of TI7, I was there at 7 a.m. Like it, the doors weren't even open, and I had this um, sweet pass. Uh, the doors weren't open. I just hung around the arena for like three hours until the doors were doors open. Doors open. So, I mean, so I'm, I'm going to miss it. And this year is my husband's first TI. He oh. couldn't take the time off in the previous years to come with me to TI. So I I really wanted him to f have the same feeling with me for that to experience that. I'm, I guess he will experience the same thing in Vancouver. I just, I'm just a little disappointed that it's not in Kiri now. Yeah, yeah. Does your husband play Dota as well? Yes, he he got me into Dota actually. Okay. So um, it was it was summer, as TIs happen. It was summer, so he was watching. We had a friend over, and he was watching uh, TI, and I had no idea about the game. I was completely clueless. Um, my friends tried to get me into Dota one. Back in my back in our college days, uh, but it was like 3 a.m. when they offered it, and I was like, "Nope, I'm going to bed." I never really got into Dota just because it was just such an inconvenient time they offered it to me. <laughs> um, and and it, it, for, t for Dota too, um, I got bored quite a lot in the first couple of games that I watched. But then, I don't know. It somehow stuck. Uh, I, I I I found it very interesting after a few couple of games few games and then I started watching more and more and then playing and then figuring out what a beautiful game it is and here I am. I don't I don't I actually don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Um my husband and I we actually we found Dota when we were just looking for free games on Steam and mm -hmm. we just happened to choose it and we started playing it and then it's like, you know, four thousand hours later <laughs> Yeah. You know, playing Dota, yeah, it, it's pretty wild, and we're we're going, uh, my husband went last year, but we're going for the full week this year, both of us, and it's, because it, it's actually like, uh, August 12th is our anniversary, and so last year it was like during our anniversary, so we're like, this is our anniversary trip. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Yeah, but it'll be fun. I'm interested, I'm, I'm, I feel the same, um. Seattle's a cool city, and like just Key Arena, like because that last year was my first TI, and it was just like really mm -hmm. magical in a way. Yes, and, it's definitely magical. Yeah, and the weather there's so nice. But from what I hear, Vancouver's also a beautiful city, and the weather's really great, and it it should be good. Although I'm a little concerned that they might not have like an outdoor area to watch. I don't know. Mm. There's like a park across the street, but I loved having like the outdoor viewing area and like the beer garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah, really that's nice. actually it's super nice. Yeah. But so. we'll see. I'm I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. TIs are always amazing. Yeah. So it really I mean 
logically, when you think about it, it doesn't really matter where it is. It, it just matters that it's happening. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are certain things that people are attached to, and this is mine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope that I hope that this year at Rogers Arena will be just as magical for you yeah. and your husband as well. Yeah. Um, so oh, the, by, by oh, the way, I'm yeah, going to take this time to ask for a certain thing from sure. streamers or or broadcasters. Mm -hmm. I was, as I, I mentioned, I was so clueless when I was watching the games. Can we please make a good newbie stream? Oh. This that will be so great. Like, yeah. I mean. If I had that, I pro there was probably a newbie stream. I just probably didn't know about it at the time. Mm -hmm. But that will be, I think my transition into this will be so much smoother. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good thing to have, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I think that's like a really important thing in general. With Dota, it's so hard to get into because it's so complicated. So yeah. it's very intimidating to people that might not know or like, you know, there's there's not a lot of tools for people like that. I mean, I learned how to play. I watched Purge videos when I first started to play. But like when I first started, I mean, I would bring like for five hours. <laughs> yeah, I would bring like four healing salves to lane. And I was like, what are tangos? I don't even know what those are. I just <laughs> use the healing salves. But yeah, no, that's a good point. They, I, I definitely agree with that. They should put more emphasis on getting new people into the game and making it easy for them to understand, especially with TI because it gets so much publicity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um. So to kind of wrap things up a little, um, do you have any personal projects that you're working on that you want to promote or share or anything, maybe Team Secret uh, that you want people to look out for? Uh, yeah, so um, I really don't have much time for personal projects because all my time is taken up by work and after that for, for secrets uh, analysis, but uh, we're going to be building a lot of stuff this coming year for secrets uh, Dota team and for other teams as well. So um, we're going to be publishing a lot of content, especially analytical content. Our CEO is very intent on um, reaching out with the stuff that we're already doing in-house. So we're going to be publishing some stuff and just watch out for it. Awesome. So, so would you say that um, from what you understand that, that you feel like Team Secret puts a lot of emphasis on like having good data and good analytics available for the team, maybe more so than other teams, or yes, you I don't really hear that much about other organizations having data analysts like completely full time. There are some, but <laughs> it's, it seems like from what you're telling me that there's a, a lot of emphasis put on it with Team Secret. Yes, um, Clement values uh, objective information a lot, mm. so um, we, we put a lot of emphasis on analytics. It doesn't necessarily mean that we base everything on it. It just means that we have that information as an input to our coach and to our captain as well. So they can choose to discard it, which is perfectly fine because numbers don't always uh, tell tell a good story. It's just what you make of them. But they have they have grounds for uh, objective comparison of what they want to do. I really can't tell you much more than this, but. Um, yeah, we, we like having numbers around to see if to validate or to um, reject our, our ideas about the game. So that's what, what they're used for, basically. Yeah, so would you see maybe in the future having dedicated data teams for esports organizations would be like something that will take esports to another level of having like that be just like a standard thing among all teams? To have a I think analyst. it will happen. I yeah. think it will happen. But I'm a little biased because um, during my um, during my other job as well, everything that the, the thing that I see every day, day in day out, is that everybody's moving to data driven um, data driven tools and decision making processes. So I, I, I'm used to seeing that. I, I don't know how long esports will take or if it'll ever happen, but I think it will. And I don't think it's going to be long. So, for instance, take Team Liquid, right? They they have a partnership with SAP, which is a huge analytics vendor. I have my own opinions on them, but um, uh, they are moving already towards a, a more formal solution in their own systems. And I think this is going to happen for uh, bigger teams first and maybe trickle down to uh, smaller organizations. Mm -hmm. But eventually it will happen. I mean, I, I don't think we can avoid 
being an analytical driven society at all yeah. really hard are and it's just it probably is just a matter of time until it just goes into esports yeah okay cool well thank you so much for coming on to the show elvin and i appreciate it and i wish team secret luck coming in the coming ti Yes, I will be very happy if my team finally wins TI because <laughs> I, I mean, I try. I, I'm I'm an easygoing person. I get along well with people, but I'm also very competitive, and I just hate that we haven't won the TI yet since I joined. So, mm-hmm. hopefully, this time is a charm, and we're gonna break the TI curse. The Chinese teams are not gonna win this TI, and we're gonna win it, and we're gonna be <laughs> TI champions, and it's gonna be all amazing. So, <laughs> this is my hope and wish for this coming TI. Ah, oh, well, cool. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure I'll see you at TI so we can I'll yeah, congratulate you in person. <laughs> yes, TI okay. winner already confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone in the chat and watching the video later on, please follow Elvin. It's her handles below, but it's at L1 underscore Norn, N-O-R-N. And you can follow me. Well, my cat, <laughs> just jumping on my chair. You can follow me at Leafy Peachy, follow Desolades at Desolades, and you can follow our Twitch channel. Keep up to date. Twitter is mo- mostly what we use to announce. We'll be uploading this onto our YouTube channel for people to watch later. And we hope everyone has a lovely evening. Bye. Bye.